Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today I'm going to be showing you all of the new features built into iOS 9 with your iPhone and iPad. Let's get started. To kick things off, let's take a look at the new visuals of iOS 9. Now for starters, you can see my background here is changed. And if you go into the settings application into the wallpaper section, we have a whole list of new wallpapers that you can access that are dedicated to iOS 9. You'll also notice with iOS 9 that Apple has changed its font. It's now using San Francisco, and this is going to be standard for Apple across all its devices. The keyboard has been cleaned up with the ability to see what case your letters are in and better voice recognition abilities. The multitask still works the same, so double clicking on the home button will open up your multitask. It's now visually changed, so you'll notice that when you open it, you swipe to the right to access various applications you have open. You still swipe upwards to close them. But it's a little bit more difficult, as you can see, I'm having a little bit of trouble there. It's a little bit more difficult to play around with. And also, if you have handoff set up, you'll be able to access that at the bottom. Notification Center has been updated a little bit, mainly in the notification section. You'll notice that it's now not listed by application, but actually by the time that the notification came in. So basically, if you'd like to switch it back, you're going to have to do so in the settings application. And in the today section, you'll notice we have some new stock widgets. First off, we have batteries. This basically shows you the battery power of your current device and the Apple Watch if you have one. You'll also notice the Find Friends widget right there and that ties in with the new stock Find Friends application. If you wanna delete any of these, just scroll to the bottom, tap on edit and you can remove them this way. Siri has been updated as well. Now I'll be showing you a full tutorial on how to use Siri with everything that's involved with it, but for now, you'll notice that Siri has a new animation and it's removed that sound you heard when you access it. You also have the ability to enable Hey Siri without a charger. This you'll have to do in the settings application, but it's only available for iPhone 6S and newer. You also have some more technical questions you can ask Siri. For example, show me pictures I took July 13, 2014, and it'll show you those pictures. Again, I'll be posting a full tutorial on Siri in the very near future. Tying in with Siri is Siri suggestions. So if we pull down and bring up our spotlight search, you'll notice we have Siri app suggestions. But if you pull from the left side to the right, it'll bring up other Siri suggestions as well. For example, we have our contacts, we have applications, and we have news that we can access. Another small feature that I find very useful with iOS 9 is the back to app feature. So for example, if we're looking at Twitter, and we get a notification while we're in the application and we tap to take a look at that notification, you'll notice at the top it says back to Twitter. So if we tap on that, it'll go ahead and just jump us back to Twitter. Now let's take a look at the settings application because it's gone through a little bit of a change that I find very useful. So for starters, if you pull down, you'll bring up the settings search bar and this is very useful, especially if you're searching for those hidden applications. So we'll type in assistive touch here and it'll bring up the assistive touch. It also brought up dial assist so you can see it's going to grab any kind of setting that you're searching for. And you'll notice it'll even tell you general accessibility interaction so rather than going through and looking for all of these settings to get to assistive touch just type it in tap on it and it takes you right to that setting continuing with settings is the dedicated battery setting so if you tap on battery you'll notice you'll be able to access the battery percentage from here this will be a lot easier because before it was kind of hidden you'll also notice we have battery life suggestions and then battery usage down here for the last 24 hours and if you tap on any of the applications, you'll get a more detailed understanding of your battery usage. Also up top is a new feature called low power mode. And if you turn this on, your battery will actually turn yellow. This is basically going to temporarily reduce the power consumption until you can fully charge your device. When it's on, it says that it's going to kind of change up some things, mail fetch, background app refresh, automatic downloads, and some visual effects will be reduced or turned off. So keep that in mind. And from what I'm reading, it should be able to give you about an extra hour. You can see it just dimmed my screen on its own right there. Back to settings again, we'll go ahead and use this new bar to type in car, and we'll see that you have CarPlay here. If you tap on that, if you have a car that supports CarPlay, you can use it from here. And finally, if we tap on photos and camera, we can actually change the quality of the videos we're recording in. So if we tap on record video here, you'll see you can record at 720p at 30 frames, 1080p at 30 frames, or 1080p at 60 frames. 
games and you can pick this on your own. You also have your record slow-mo abilities, 720 at 120, 720 at 240 frames per second. Moving on to the stock applications here, you'll notice you have a few new stock apps. Find iPhone and Find Friends. Now these applications can't be deleted, so you're kind of stuck with them. With that being said, you don't have Newsstand anymore, which is really nice because most people didn't like it. Instead, you have a new application called News App, which will replace Newsstand. The News App is pretty much standard. It's basically pulling news stories from your interests, very much like Flipboard if you've ever used that. If you don't have the News App at this point, because I don't, you can go into the Settings, Language, and Region section and then set your region to the United States, reboot your device and it should bring up that news application. It should be fixed and available for more countries as time passes though. The mail app has been updated a little bit so if we open it up and tap on edit at the top you'll see three settings mark all, move all, and archive all. If we want to add an attachment, we'll just open up a new message here. We'll tap and hold, and if you tap this arrow twice, you'll be able to add attachments, and this will add attachments from your iCloud drive. Now, with that being said, if you don't have your iCloud drive set up, you can do so very easily just by tapping on the settings application, opening your iCloud drive setting, and then you'll see iCloud Drive. If you tap on that, it'll go through a process where it guides you through an update. Once you've updated it, open this up again, and you'll be able to tap on Show on Home Screen. And when you do that, you'll have the iCloud Drive on your home screen here, so then you can use it in various ways. The Notes app has been updated as well to perform more like an actual word editor. You can create sketches, add photos, create checklists, and change the font style. I'll be posting a full video dedicated to Notes in the near future though. Your Photos app has also been updated with a new select feature. So if we tap select up top and we just basically pull across, you'll be able to select multiple photos just like this rather than having to tap each one individually and then you can go ahead and delete them all as you would in the past. The podcast application has been updated with a new layout and also with a new unplayed feature here. Now for those of you who noticed, you're missing Passbook and that's because it's now called Wallet. Inside the Wallet app, it basically does everything that Passbook did where it holds your digital versions of your credit cards, reward cards, and various other cards like that. The next new features are dedicated strictly for iPad users. To kick things off, we'll open up a folder and you'll notice it's much larger. It's now got a 4x4 layout which will fit up to 16 applications per page. This has changed from the 3x3 layout that you'll still notice on your iPhone. Notification Center also looks a little bit different. If you pull down, you'll notice on the right side you'll be able to see your widgets and notifications. And on the left side you'll be able to see some of your today information. The keyboard also looks a little bit different with the iPad and that's because of this toolbar that you'll notice on the left and on the right sides. Now depending on which application you're typing in will depend on what tools you can access. For example, in the notes application here we have an undo, redo, and paste option and we also have this check mark option here. So if you are typing a list or something, you can check off what you've completed. You also can format your text here in various ways. And on the right side we can add photos as well as draw. Also, with the keyboard, you can split it apart by pulling apart. You can actually use two fingers here now, and it'll give you an option to sort of go to where you want to go. It's a little bit quicker than just holding on. Once you've selected it, you can just go and highlight it. So if you just double tap with two fingers, it'll begin selecting, and then you can pull what you want, and then from there you can pretty much cut, paste, whatever you want to do with it. The next few features are really cool, but they're limited to certain iPads. For starters, this one is available for pretty much every iPad, and this is going to be a split screen mode. So I'm going to open up Twitter here, and from here, if I'm looking at Twitter and I want to actually quickly access something else, I can pull from the right and it'll bring up another application. And it'll give you a list here, if you pull down, of the applications you can access. Now at this point, not many are supported, but as they update to iOS 9, there more should be available to you. And what you can do from here, simply just open it up. So if I wanted to take a note on something I just read, I can do that on this application. And it's fully functional here. I'll be able to do pretty much anything. I can even draw with this little piece here and then keep that in there. It just gives you a little small space to work with. And once you've completed that, you can swipe back and access the original application. Now if you have an iPad Pro, an iPad Mini 4, and an iPad Air 2 or later, 
from this point here, you should be able to pull this into the middle and access both applications and use them at the same time. Again, with those same iPads, you can access a feature called Picture in Picture. So if I open up a video here, what you could do is actually pull that video down into the corner, similar to how YouTube has the application. While you're watching the video, you can tap a picture in picture button, it'll pull it to the corner. You'll be able to access your different applications like Twitter. If you wanted to open that up while the movie's still playing in the corner, you'll be able to resize it, pull it around. And even in that, you can open up that third application and still have the video playing here, have it in the middle accessing three different applications all at once. This is the iPad mini 2, but if you have the iPad Pro, iPad mini 4, iPad Air 2 or later, you should be able to get these cool picture in picture and split screen mode features. So those are the new features of iOS 9. I'll be doing a whole bunch of new videos on all of these different features and abilities that you can do with iOS 9 as well as the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. You'll be able to learn some really cool tips and tricks in the process. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to be notified when I post those videos. Personally, my favorite features were the picture in picture and split screen mode, although I don't get full access to them with this iPad. I should be getting a new one, which will give me those features. I think it'll just help so much with productivity. Let me know what your favorite features were in the comment box down below. Feel free to hit that like button and share the video on Facebook or Twitter. Also follow me on those social media sites as I post updates on what's going on in the tech world and with myself. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.